Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of a Roman period Italian, uh, imperial period of Italy. Uh, first, this individual is actually quite an outlier, he is not similar to the rest of Roman Italians. Uh, in terms of his autosomal ancestry, autosomal DNA, his closest populations are French, Spanish from Catalonia, Spanish from Castilla, Ili Castilla, Ileon, uh, so quite northern shifted, quite Western European, and s very different from uh, Italians. So this person is most similar to French, but he lived in Central Italy. So what is the most likely ancestry of this person? Most likely, this person is of Celtic ancestry, and um, of course, he also has a little bit of. Uh, Italic or Romance ancestry as well, but it's in my uh, my theory is that this is mostly a Celt. Uh, with my trade predictor, he's scoring pretty much the same thing. He is closest to North Italians, followed by Bulgarians and French, and Spanish come fourth place. Um, okay, uh, what about the haplogroups? His Y DNA is J2B, and his mitochondrial lineage is U3A2. Um, actually, what's interesting is that here, here on on the um, spreadsheet, there is a sort of a mistake because one of one of the haplogroups says J2B L283, and the other one says J2A. So which one is it? I think it's um, J2B. Uh, I think it's J2B, yeah, because there's also this which says J2B. So yeah, it's most likely J2B as my trade predictor uh, determined for him. Now let's go ahead and check what they score for um, National Quad and what they score in terms of their phenotypes, what they resemble. Uh, this video will be kind of short because I'm I'm quite sick. It's difficult for me to talk. So let's go ahead and open National Quad. And it looks like this individual is got has got darkest brown eyes or brown eyes. He's got definitely quite dark eye color. Uh, it looks like he's got dark brown hair most likely, but there is also a pretty significant likelihood of black or light brown hair. Unfortunately, this file is not very high quality. That's why you see uh, such diversity in the result. Normally, you wouldn't see such diversity. By that, I mean normally you wouldn't see 2.2% blue eyes together with 42% darkest brown eyes. You'd see like 0 for blue and 42 for darkest brown. Um, him scoring 2 for blue eyes and 42 for dark brown tells me that it's this file is probably missing a lot of important variations. Uh, for skin color, it looks like he's mostly got white, most likely a white skin. Uh, although, it's, although it's also possible for him to have palest skin or olive skin. And for hair texture, it looks like he has got straight hair. All right. For coloring related variants, I was indeed right. He does not have genotypes for BH1 or BH2. <coughs> That's very unfortunate. Uh, these genotypes are very important in determining in determining your eye color and hair color. He does not have blue haplotype three. Okay. <laughs> and is there anything else interesting here? He does not have any gene related variants in MC1R. Okay. All right. Uh, now let's go ahead and check his phenotype oracle, what phenotypes he resembles the most. So the closest phenotype to him is this. Not very surprising. This is a very, um, I, I should say, Italian or French phenotype. Uh, when I see this phenotype, the first association I get is that, yeah, it's French. The second phenotype is quite, um, quite distant. But there are also quite a lot of quite a lot of French people who are, who look like this. So just because it's called Volgid doesn't mean uh, that the phenotype itself is not found in the west of Europe, because there's plenty of Western Europeans who look just like this. And the third um, is Alpinid. Okay. So for the two-way model, two-way admixture, the closest admixture is. 50% this plus 50% this. And the second closest admixture is 50% this plus 50% this. So basically 100% this is the second closest admixture. All right. I don't think I'm going to look at the 12-way oracle. It's kind of difficult to um, make sense of it. 
So I'll, I'll figure out a way to make it more presentable. But currently, it's just not really pleasant to look at. All right. We're going to look at um, biomarkers, what genetic predispositions this person has to various biomarkers. And it looks like he's got a significantly above average level of vitamin D. That's really good to see. It looks like he's got a below average level of LDL cholesterol. Once again, really good to see. Below average level of HDL cholesterol, which is not so good to see, but he's still very much in the healthy range. For glucose, he's got a below average level of glucose, which is once again quite good to see. For hemoglobin, he's got an average level of hemoglobin. Uh, he falls into the typical or normal range, so that's really good to see. For blood pressure, he's got slightly below average blood pressure, which is definitely quite good. Expected level of iron in blood. Looks like he's got a pretty much spot on average level of iron in blood. Once again, that's pretty good. And we're going to move on to his results with the polygenic risk scores. So he's got a spot on average risk of myopia. He's got a spot on average risk of primary biliary cirrhosis. He's got below average risk of stroke. He's got significantly below average odds of male pattern hair loss, which is very interesting. Uh, kind of uncommon for Europeans. To Europeans mostly have higher odds for male pattern hair loss. Uh, so it's kind of interesting that he's a European and he's got decreased odds of that. For atrial fibrillation, looks like he's got below average odds for atrial fibrillation. Nothing relevant was found for deep vein thrombosis, and it looks like he's got spot on average score for bipolar type 1. It looks like he's got spot on average score for schizophrenia. Uh, it looks like he's got a slightly below average score for diabetes, type 2 diabetes. He's got a slightly below average score for Alzheimer's, uh, slightly above average score for multiple sclerosis. So far, I'm not seeing anything concerning. I really haven't seen anything concerning in this file. <coughs> okay. Uh, for cancer section, looks like he's got two risk variants for breast cancer out of 16, which is pretty good. Eight risk variants for testicular cancer out of 22, which is once again pretty good. So he's he really doesn't have anything alarming in this file. There is no reason to suggest, there is no suggestions of anything dangerous or any bad health implications. Zero risk variants for GSS out of 14, pretty good. Um, five risk variants for Crohn's out of 20, all right, that's not, not that much actually. And zero risk variance for Raffenstein's out of 16, pretty good. And five risk variance for Parkinson's out of 32, quite typical once again. Um, okay, okay. Now let's look at the very bottom. So you, you can see all the stuff I added here. I'm not going to talk about this because, number one, people don't really watch this part of the video. People tend to click off when I start talking about the monogenic traits. But also, I do want to show you what I added. Uh, if you purchase a report, Currently, this is what you will get. There's just a lot a lot of information here, a lot of health and traits-related information. Oh, oh, yeah, and here you go. This is why he's scoring so low for male pattern boldness, because of his genotype here in the AR gene. So, yeah, he will not go bold. And, um, okay, um, yeah, at the very bottom, you see the blood types. Most likely his blood type is type O or A or B. He definitely doesn't have type AB blood type. Uh, unfortunately, there was not enough data in the file to accurately determine, to precisely deter de <coughs> determine his blood type. But most likely it is type O. Well, thanks for watching my video until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And also... The file to download, the link to download the file in 23andMe format will be in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.